Good morning. Good morning. Tempted to have a moment of silence for the Packers. But probably not appropriate. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. together. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. 
Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery, take no empty pride. No flower of grace set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. The power of laws is your God. Steadfast love is yours, O God, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and for those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as if they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of, of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like some of you, I watch 
British TV. One of my favorites is the great British baking show. A dozen contestants strong on an annual basis from tens of thousands of applicants compete for the weekly title of Star Baker over the 10 week period. And at the end, the single overall winner is chosen. The actual baking contests are broken into three parts. A signature bake where the bakers must stay within fairly narrow guidelines, but are afforded some leeway in which they can exercise their creativity. A technical challenge where the amateurs must execute incredibly difficult recipes with little or no instruction that includes such wildly complex items as Spanish wind tort, arlettes, mocatines, shish tort, Sicilian cassatel. I've never heard of most of them. And watching them being made is enough to remind me of why I prefer to cook and not bake. When I was writing this sermon, my spell checker flagged almost every one of those words as being misspelled. The first two challenges occur on the Saturday, giving the aspiring patissiers only a few hours to compete each. On the Sunday comes the last test, the showstopper, whose completion must typically occur within a five or six hour period. This challenge is essentially exactly what the name suggests. No holds barred. Mind-blowing masterpieces. One of the challenges for American viewers is that all the measurements are done using the metric scale. And as a wise man once said, the United States and the UK are two nations separated by a common language. Words and phrases such as soggy bottom, proving a dough, saucy puds, and even biscuits. No, they're not the same thing as here. Banoffee pie, frangipan, genoise. Well, they simply don't translate well into the American lexicon. Another TV word that the Brits use is what we call host they call a presenter. Besides Paul Hollywood and the quintessential British grand dame Mary Berry, both from the BBC version of the Great British Baking Show, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, one of my real favorites is James May. He, along with Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson, are loved and hated by the viewing public for their expositional, yet sarcastic and cynical look at the automobile. Of late, James May has begun to branch out into travel-related shows. May has also always been proud to show off his nerdy stripes, whether he was exploring history or mucking about with big toys, and his bumbling and shuffling Britishness made him the perfect documentary maker. I just binged through his new travel show on Amazon Prime, James May, Our Man in India. His first series was on Japan, where he traveled from the northernmost tip down all the way to the southernmost. Having worked for the Japanese for over a decade and a half, I was fascinated by May's in-depth and often darkly humorous look at the land of the rising sun as he traveled through this amazing country. Along with the great British baking show, most of its amazing seasons are now available on Netflix. I highly recommend May's expose of Japanese culture, which is on Amazon Prime. You ever feel like you're going broke from all these different streaming companies? Every one of them has like one good thing, so you have to have like six of them. I will warn you, 
But the episode that sees our man in Japan visit Hiroshima was both chilling and yet deeply moving. But May is rarely that serious, and his dark sense of humor reminds me of my own. He once said that France is just a country that you drive through to get to Italy. That's all it's there for. <laughs> now, what has any of this to do with Jesus' calling of what would be the core of his group of disciples, you're probably asking yourselves. Despite his colorful use of the English version of the English language, May was quite taken aback when in Japan he came face to face with its people and the natural beauty of the landscape and how it could be so eloquently described by the use of haiku. Haiku are traditional Japanese poems, and while they don't have to rhyme, they must adhere to a strict formula. The verses must be 17 syllables long and be in three lines. So five, then seven, then five again. When reading the familiar story of today's gospel and Jesus' words in the King James Version, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, I thought that this story would make a great haiku. I found some haiku that speak of fishing. So here we go. Remember the formula. Down by the river, daylight has barely arrived. Mist dances gently. It's beautiful. Simple, but beautiful. I breathe the sweet air, grass, dew, and some late blossom, perfume from the fields. The sun is up now, kissing the top of the trees. Warm gold and green mix. Patrick College. <laughs> By the water's edge, I sit calm, quiet, and still. Take in the moment. I like this stuff. It's so, I don't know, it's cool. I watch the water. To fish now would be to rush. I'll learn much more here. Haiku has the uncanny ability to look deep into the true meaning of the simple, yet so effective words, and how they are arranged to produce more than just their obvious intent. Haiku becomes a sort of philosophy, a window into a deeper and more meaningful place, much the same way that an icon is a window into a more ethereal world. Here are three examples of haiku poems from Matsuo Basho, 1644 to 1694, so he died when he was 15, considered the greatest haiku poet to ever have lived. An old silent pond, a frog drums into the pond, splash, silence again. Autumn moonlight, a worm digs silently into the chestnut. In the twilight rain, these brilliant hued hibiscus, a lovely sunset. If you watch May's expose on Japan, he uses haiku with great success to convey the way in which the experience literally changed him as a person even at age 56. I think Jesus would approve of a haiku that looks into the deeper meaning of his calling, 
of those who would become his followers, both then and today. So much like James May in Japan, I set about writing my own haiku, but not before seeing if Google knew of any that had already been written. As it goes for this gospel, I didn't find much. I did find some about Jesus. And yes, I counted the syllables, looking for the 575 formula. And here they are. Beautiful face of Jesus, mirror reflection, a soul perfection. Open and waiting, Jesus' arms are spread out wide. God welcomes us all. In humility, regard others over self with a Christ-like mind. Beauty, majesty, never fading, bright, burning through eternity. In your secret place, away from the eyes of men, you reign, O oh my Lord. In your love, given, in your anger, crucified, Jesus Christ, our life. To write one about Jesus' calling of his disciples required some thought. I came up with these, and I must admit it was kind of fun. So here we go. I wrote these. Jesus sees the men. He calls them to his side. Walk with me, proclaim. By the sea they work. He comes calling them by name. Now they fish for souls. Brothers they once were. Capernaum was their home. Christ they now make none. In darkness they sat. Then the Christ brings them his light. All forever change. Writing haiku is both easy and yet hard and I confess that mine are somewhat simplistic. If you're really interested in haiku as a hobby, and some people are, it's either that or baking, there's a book titled How to Haiku, A Writer's Guide to Haiku and Related Forms. My understanding is that haiku, despite being limited to only 17 syllables, conveys a much deeper and larger meaning than its shortness would offer at first glance. I'll leave you with one last haiku about Jesus. I am their shepherd. My lost sheep will hear my voice and return to me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all the rest of the universe. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, died from God, life from life. True God, true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again for his judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. There's a people, our form four, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. <coughs> Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all the reverence for your earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray thanksgiving for the support for the work of our ministry task forces for outreach ministries for stewardship, for the prospects of new growth, and for your spiritual gifts of hospitality, giving, and faith. We pray for all the blessings in our own lives. For television, for radio. For street lights. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We bid your prayers for the patriarchs of the Universal Church. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, <clears throat> for Michael, our presiding bishop, who's recovering from surgery, and for Matthew, our assistant bishop, for the standing committee and the clergy of the Diocese of Milwaukee, for our celebrant, Father Nigel, and for Karen, the deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. <clears throat> In the Anglican Central Prayer, we pray for, oh, for the week of prayer for Christian unity. In Diocesan Central Prayer, we pray for St. John Christopher, Delaphine. In our Parasycle Prayer, we pray for Daisy Renzo <coughs> and Carol. We pray for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Noah and Tanzania. We pray for our covenant parish, St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church, their clergy and parishioners. We pray for those who are unemployed that they may find jobs. We pray for those in the armed forces that they may find in peace and be brought home safely, especially for Garrett. For the Israel Gaza conflict, for the Ukraine, for the end of gun violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who, who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Mary, Barth, Jeanette, Lee, Craig, June, Casey, Rita, Marianne, Mandy, <coughs> Stephen, Margaret, and especially for Luke, who lies in the bed. And those who wish to pray for him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all those who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Grace, Paul, <coughs> Jerry, Skip, Ethan Wally, Muriel, Albert, Muriel, Bill, Aki, 
Virginia, Mary, Edward, Richard, and those you now and either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <coughs> Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have done done them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. All right, tell me, who's watched the great British Bake Show? Looking at Molly, because she seems like the kind that would watch it. You, of course, are a baker, so it makes sense. You too? Good, yeah. Very, very Mary Berry should scare anybody that sets foot in the kitchen. <laughs> because whatever you're doing, I'm sure you're doing something she would not approve of. <laughs> she's like the female Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's a she's a classic. So but she'd been replaced by, by Crew Leaf for the last few seasons, who's uh, South African, and she's pretty cool. I like her. She likes booze in her pastries. Oh. <laughs> Even if it is, you know, eight in the morning, <laughs> she doesn't care. Anyway, um, announcements. You got anything? Yeah, we'll be holding our annual meeting next Sunday after the service. In the parish hall, there are annual reports and uh, budgets. We we'll want to review that before the meeting. We'll have food at that meeting as well. So, mm -hmm. um, if you have an attended one, I encourage you to attend. Uh, sadly, you won't be conflicting with a packet. You know that? Okay. Did I detect a certain firmly I believe in that Gloria? It sounded familiar to the, the show house seminary song. Yes. Okay, I don't know when I do. When is it working? Just speak loudly. I don't, uh, if any of you remember Ruth Kutcher, she lies near death and gave her last rites on Friday. I know the funeral will be at Krause Funeral Home, but she's got it all planned out. And because we don't get a newsletter anymore, I'm now writing the Joy Corner on our website, so if anybody's interested in looking at it. Or the website. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. <laughs>
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. salvation. Amen.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.